I'll tell you a funny story. While we were shooting, the exorcist came to the, we were in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. The exorcist came to town. So I said, oh, everybody come see it. I invite the crew and everybody to come be my guest. And we'll go. So we go to the theater. And at the moment that, I don't remember exactly what was happening, but some woman got up and ran up the aisle, leaving and fainted in the aisle. And I got up and ran over to her and took her hand and I was clapping her hand and trying to bring her back to consciousness. And then suddenly I thought, if she opens her eyes and sees my face, <laughs> she's going to think she died and went to hell. So I grabbed, <laughs> I grabbed a stranger's hand who was there. I said, here, take her hand. <laughs> got out of there. Well, that's what makes The Exorcist so effective. It's because you identify so much with your character and your character's family that when things start to go south, there is just a greater impact to be had from an audience's perspective. Exactly. That, that's the whole secret is when the audience identifies with your character, then you can tell them your story. They're feeling it. You always want the audience to feel what you're feeling. You know, and the only way you can get to do that is to really be feeling it. You know, if you're faking it, that's a different part of the brain. A fake smile like this, that's a different part of the brain from a real smile, you know. And if you're in your reality, the audience will feel what you're feeling. Before shooting The Exorcist, did they screen anything for you to help prepare you for the experience and for the story? I didn't. No, they didn't screen out the way. I don't think there's anything to screen. But um, I did read a report put out by, I think, Northwestern University, I think, um, of a real case of, of a possession. Um, a lot of the things that happened in that film were from that report. Like the, the piece of furniture moving across the floor. To me, that we got that out of that report. I mean, Billy Friedkin did. So, so reading an actual case of possession um, made everything I had to do possible. Because it was so illogical what happened. It was so out of the ordinary, out of re the reality as we know it, that I didn't have to question what we had in the story and go, oh, could that really happen? She couldn't fly in the air like that, you know. The bed bouncing, it doesn't make sense. Because in this actual uh, report of an actual case of possession, that's what the kind of thing that was happening. I just remember trying to be grounded in reality when dealing with the doctors and so forth, trying to make sense out of what they were saying to me, which didn't make line up with my experience of what was happening. And then when it got into the manifestations, of possession, I was just in. You know, when you're trying to believe in the unbelievable, which is what she was doing, what Chris McNeil was doing. So it was what I was doing. How do you believe in the unbelievable? You see it with your own eyes. This can't be happening. Was The Exorcist the first time in your career that you really witnessed a strong audience reaction to the work that you have done. Yeah. Well, you know, that was such a once in a lifetime experience. I remember the morning that it, 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 I came down for my cup of coffee in my kitchen and I turned on the TV and there were, they were photographing people lined up 
in the snow in Montreal for four hours waiting for the theater to open, you know? And I remember I was holding my coffee and I said out loud, people, people, it's a movie. Because <laughs> it was, the, the anticipation was just astonishing. And how it was manifested, whoever saw anything like that. And I think that's just a testament to uh, how effective this movie is at just generating these extreme responses from people. You know, my my son was around when I was shooting, and he would come to the studio and watch um, Linda Blair get into her makeup makeup and so forth. So he wanted to see the film when it came out. I said, no, no, you cannot see this film. You're too young. He was then, I think, about 10, nine or 10. Four years later, when it was his birthday, he said, I want a screening of The Exorcist. I'm 14 years old. I'm old enough. That's what I want for my birthday. I said, OK. So I had a screening. He invited his friends. A couple of years later, he said, Mom, and I didn't want to tell you this, but you were right. I was too young. <laughs> yeah, it's a scary movie. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. To check out more of our content, click subscribe or one of the two videos appearing right now on your screen.